Today, we're gonna to be walking through the margins of selling your products on Amazon, understanding all the different costs involved, including the costs associated with fulfillment by Amazon or FBA, and how you can help control those, understand those, and also bring all those costs into your financial accounting system to understand a complete transparent view of your Amazon business. One of the biggest issues that brands face when selling on Amazon is understanding the cost of selling on Amazon. There's a lot of different costs involved when you're on the selling side of things that a lot of times people on the buying side of things don't realize. Amazon does not understand the margins exactly crystal clear, in my opinion. And so it's very important though for a brand to understand each individual cost kind of boils down to on the unit economics basis. So if I'm selling one unit, what are my different costs associated with that? There's a variety of different factors that affect these costs. It could be the category you're selling in. It could be the size and weight of your item. It could be how you fulfill your item. Are you using Amazon's fulfillment using FBA fulfilled by Amazon? Or are you fulfilling it yourself or through a 3PL? There's some other hidden costs to factor in, such as advertising, promotions, returns, and some other costs as well. Do you want to make sure you account for in your unit economics? And there's also a great internal tool that you can help understand on Seller Central what your margins will be on Amazon. So let's walk through Amazon's Fulfillment by Amazon or FBA revenue calculator that's built into Amazon Seller Central, which is the platform that brands use to sell the products directly to customers through the Amazon Marketplace model. So. Um, through this tool, you can essentially really understand your margins of selling on Amazon. The great thing about it is you can actually search um, in a variety of different ways. So you can search by your own internal SKU built into Amazon Seller Central that you have, or you can search by an ASIN, which is kind of the Amazon identifier that each product has. So you can go to any product page and get that ASIN and plug it into here, or you can just go by keyword, which is what we're going to do today. So. We're going to look for uh, gluten-free crackers. We're just going to find a product here. We're going to hit search. Pulls up the top results. So again, you only select the top four or five here. Um, to obviously use a product that you find, you're going to want to use the ASIN for that product. So I'm going to hit uh, this blue diamond almonds, this pack of six, right? So this is six uh, four-ounce boxes. I'm going to hit select here. Amazon's automatically going to pull in... Um, the package dimensions, those are the six boxes, what the, the, you know, the length with height of that, those are together, and what the unit weight is, because these affect the FBA fee, right? So it's very important to make sure that those align um, with what you're looking for. If you're selling a new product on Amazon, in, but you can find something that's very similar to your current dimensions and weight, and in that same category to understand that. Um, you can click on the page here to go directly to the product page as well. The first thing you wanna do is, is you wanna essentially type in what your different costs are going to be for the different products, right? So, um, uh, and what your price is going to be, right? So essentially, you know, you're going to say, okay, I'm going to sell this at $19.99, my fulfillment and $19.99 Amazon fulfillment. Um, so the difference between these two are is Amazon, meaning this is you leveraging fulfillment by Amazon, right? This is your sending out each individual order or your 3PL or distributors doing it for you, right? This would be if you're going to charge any additional shipping when you're sending out the item. So I'm just going to put zero here, right? And this is your total amount of revenue. What you did, some of those there. This next breakdown is the selling on Amazon fees, right? So we're going to do some of the costs for you know your company or, or your 3PL to do it. Um, let's say it costs you know 50 cents of labor, um, another you know 50 cents of packaging material and then on average um you know this is a, a almost a three pound box to ship it to anywhere in the country um let's say on average it it costs about you know 8.75 to ship it up to a customer i'm going to leave customer service out of it at zero right you can also hit this box and it's not going to do any of that so the total cost to fulfill that is 9.75 right um, you can also break down the storage cost per unit. So what it costs you to store that item at your fulfillment center, um, your distributor every month. So I can say like five cents here, right? And then um, going forward from here, um, 
I'm, I can put in my cost of my product. So let's say for these, you know, six boxes, um, the cost of the product is, um, let's just go with $6, right? Um, on the other side of it, in the other column, we have the Amazon fulfillment, right? So going down here, we have the selling price, and then we have um, the ship to Amazon. So this is actually sending a box from your manufacturer, your distributor, your warehouse into Amazon's warehouses, right? So we usually base this on a per pound basis, but it can vary. Um, I'm just going to say it's going to cost 30 cents to send in a six pack into Amazon's fulfillment centers. You're using Amazon's um, carriers, usually when you do this, partner carriers, the rates are, are pretty competitive. Um, monthly storage cost per unit, Amazon will calculate that for you. Um, I'm just going to do average inventory units sold. I'm just going to keep this at one so we understand what the unit economics are here. Um, and then the, the cost is also $6. So I put in all my costs, my sales price, everything like that. Once I hit calculate, Amazon's going to Amazon's going to automatically pull in all the other fees, right? So let's look at these. Here we have the referral fee. Uh, the referral fee is what Amazon takes both for Amazon fulfillment or your fulfillment, this essentially straight off the top, right? And in most categories, it's 15%. Um, it is lower in some categories such as electronics and also uh, categories like um, beauty and grocery have smaller referral fees for lower priced items. But typically it's 15%. Then you can see the difference in fulfillment costs. So Amazon's charging you 6.56 to send this to anywhere in the country, a flat fee fulfillment, right? They're gonna, um, um, you know, essentially anywhere. It could be a going from a warehouse in San Diego to New York or San Diego to San Francisco. It's gonna be the same flat charge. Obviously here you're kind of taking an average of what it might be based on zone-based pricing. Even with your shipping to Amazon, your, your total fulfillment cost is much less by leveraging FBA. The storage costs a little more expensive here at Amazon, uh, 31 cents per unit. So keep that in mind there. Um, then you have your seller proceeds. So essentially what you're going to get um, after uh, you know your sales price and all the costs taken out, this is kind of what you're going to net. And then you take away your cost of goods sold from that as well. You can see the numbers here are pretty drastic as far as the difference here. Um, but you can really see you're not making um, in either scenario um, you know, a great margin on either of them. So that's where you can go back up to the top here and you can say, well, I need to make a little more. So maybe if I'm going to be filling, I'm going to do $24.99 and on my Amazon, I'm going to do $22.99, right? And I can hit calculate and I can see where that changes the margin. And look, I'm selling even a lower price using Amazon FBA, but I'm still getting a better margin. Over here on the right, you're going to see some different costs um, and revenue and, and proceeds and, and kind of a chart format here. You can also, um, you know, start to estimate, you know, okay, I'm going to think I'm going to sell about 200 units per month. And I think I'm going to actually get more sales because you most likely will if you're leveraging, you know, fulfillment by Amazon. So let's say I'm going to get, you know, 20% more sales. You can all of a sudden start to see, you know, that the drastic effect that has on some of your proceeds and your net profit. Um, if you're leveraging fulfillment by Amazon. So again, the, uh, the film by Rem Amazon, Revenue Calculator is a great tool for brands to use built right into Seller Central to really help understand your costs of selling on the Amazon platform. When trying to understand your margins on Amazon, there are really some easy basic mistakes that anyone can make. One of the biggest is not understanding how Amazon size tiers or fulfillment tiers work when you're using Amazon's in-house fulfillment method known as fulfillment by Amazon or FBA. This is again where Amazon's shipping and storing all your products for you on your behalf. And this is what makes your items el eligible for prime shipping to the end customer. Uh, Amazon has a set of size tiers based on the size and weight of an item. They different, have different fulfillment tiers based on those size tiers as well. Uh, on the end weight. And so there's kind of two different things you need to look at for each of your items, really understand what are my costs. And sometimes a tenth of an inch can push you into the next size tier, which can drastically increase the margins of your product on Amazon, especially if it's a lower price product. It's going to make a much bigger impact on that. One of the other big mistakes that we see brands make is not monitoring your FBA fees and changes to those FBA fees. So 
periodically Amazon will reweigh and remeasure a product in the warehouse that you've sent in. Again, it could be that scales having a bad day that day and it measures your product again that tenth over an inch and you fall to a whole other size tier. Well, Amazon doesn't proactively notify you that those dimensions have changed or your size tier has changed. It isn't a report on Seller Central, but it's buried. You have to pull manually pull it and audit it um, and compare it to the previous one to see if there's any changes. But it's not something that Amazon proactively tells you. And we've seen brands change drastically, either increased or even decrease, which again, there's really not too much of a concern there if it's actually falling under your actual size and weights of your product dimensions. Another big mistake we see brands make is they just assume they're making money on Amazon because Amazon's sending them money. Amazon's naturally depositing money into your bank account based on your sales and taking some of the costs associated away with that. But um, it doesn't tell the whole story of what's actually happening. Yes, they break down on the bulk view of kind of your, here's your sales, here's the fees, and here's the rest left for you. But they don't do a good job of factoring in um, and laying out all the other costs in a very meaningful way. So you can really understand the unit economics of what you sold for that period. The other thing that we see brands make a mistake is not factoring in those costs into your accounting software. So if you're using something like QuickBooks or Xero, not essentially mapping all those sales and Amazon fees into different accounts into your accounting software. So you can really take an accounting view and your books on what's happening on Amazon and then obviously looking at things like cash versus accrual. Another common mistake is that we've seen brands make is that if you have your Amazon advertising taken out of your disbursement method or, and not charged to a credit card, which we recommend having it charged to a credit card for a variety of reasons, but is that it can skew how your numbers really look because you may be charged for advertising in that same time period and that disbursement, and it can somewhat lower, uh, again, that disbursement amount. But again, bringing that into your accounting software will help solve for that. So what does it need to look like on a day-to-day -day basis to be successful in understanding your margins on Amazon? Well, number one would be to really have a detailed view kept outside of Amazon and a spreadsheet, preferably, on understanding the unit economics costs of all your products. Now, if you carry a variety of different products, uh, you could maybe just do your top sellers if you have a large SKU catalog. or Frankly, a lot of your products may have the same similar product and weight dimensions, such as they vary by, maybe by flavor. You only have to do one of those because it's really the same size and weight for each. But really laying out what each cost is, and again, a spreadsheet format, so you can really you know, modify those if fees change or if your product price changes and how that can affect that, um, easily manipulate it into some kind of spreadsheet. Also regularly auditing your category that you're in because that can also determine some of your costs and your um, weights and dimensions that Amazon have listed for your product if you're using Fulfilled by Amazon or FBA. This will help ensure that the, those fees are correct. And if not, you can actually open a case with Amazon and ask them to uh, reweigh your item, uh, rescan your item to get the proper measurements. Something else you can do to be successful on Amazon is monitoring your competition. So competition could mean if you're maybe you have other companies that are reselling your product, either authorized or unauthorized on the same listing, monitoring what their selling price is and making sure that you're not just matching their selling price and it could be negatively affecting your margins, but also monitoring competing products on different listings and understanding, you know, if I match their price, how does that affect my margins to be more competitive, right? Um, is, it, is it worth it uh, to go down to a price they're selling at? Um, is that squeezing my margins too tight? And then the final thing you can do to be successful is really just making sure that you're reviewing your accounting financials and all the Amazon um, costs that come into your accounting software. Again, using QuickBooks or Xero, we recommend an accounting software provider called A2X Accounting. that will automatically move all your Amazon disbursements into the appropriate categories into your accounting software. And it makes understanding those reports, understanding your numbers that much easier on Amazon. There's no better story I can think of than a recent brand we started working with and helping them take control of their products on Amazon. So this is a brand that's sold nationally throughout the US in grocery stores all over the country. And previously their products were on Amazon, all over Amazon, but it was not done by them. It was done by third party sellers who were either distributors or just random companies wholesaling the product from them and then reselling them on Amazon. 
So when we began working with the brand and then wanted to take control of their own Amazon presence, we had a lot of work to do in understanding those margins on Amazon. One of the first things we did was really walk the brand through the unit economics of each of their products in different sizes that they carried. Understanding what the referral fee was, what the FBA fee was, and what the different costs were associated with each of those products. Then the brand could go away and take some of their own internal, maybe packaging requirements they had for the different sizes and add those costs in as well. We also worked through a lot of dimension changes at Amazon uh, using film by Amazon. So um, because there were so many other third party sellers selling the same items, not everybody was packaging it in the same way. So while our client may have been packaging a six pack in a certain way, maybe one of the other sellers who was packaging a six pack was packaging it very differently which caused the dimensions to be different. Maybe Amazon sized that product differently. So working through that, requesting a lot of uh, QB scans at Amazon, asking them to reweigh and remeasure items was a big part of what we did. Also kind of using repricing software to actually match and monitor third-party sellers price. Because again, we can't eliminate maybe all these unauthorized resellers. We cut a lot of them off, but there's still some people out there reselling the product. So essentially, you know, using repricing software to understand that we can be between this price and this price to capture even more of the buy box.